What up, what up? We got the Digging Deep Squad, our spin-off version of the Digging Deep podcast. First of all, I didn't get the, the hoodie memo. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yes, you that. did. You just no, one one the one one. said he was going to go sleeveless and didn't go sleeveless. I heard sleeveless. I don't have any sleeveless, like as many as Haas, that's for sure. He got gun shy on us. He did get gun shy. Show off those tats, bro. This is canary yellow. Just leave me alone with my canary yellow right here real quick. <laughs> Oh, look, we'll We're show off blend. the guns more on, on the Digging Deep podcast for those who watch our long version of this, right? Our long version of it, the sit down, we get deep, we talk about life, sports, family, business, whatever. But a little secret sauce to those who don't know, we pre-record that. So we shoot it sometimes, you know, two, three weeks, sometimes a month in advance or whatever. So it's hard to talk about like the here and now, what's going on in baseball and we don't we don't have a chance to do that so we're spinning this one up so we can be more topical hit on things that are happening consider it our digital short and sweet version of this week in baseball i'm gonna go around the table a little bit because again people may or may not know who we are i am your fake host anthony saratelli uh, i definitely won't be here every week we'll be rotating this in with great guests and stuff but i am co-founder of moonball media and minor league extraordinaire uh, I don't have any big league time, but I know a lot about, talking about Mr. Worldwide. You did go Mr. Worldwide for a little bit. I did. Mr. I got to Japan. So I know enough about the game. I'll chime in. Uh, but we got my partner in crime, co-founder of Moonball Media, Eric Cosmer, World Series champ and owner of 300 cutoff shirts. Uh, <laughs> ready to go. Got the spiked hair. And of course, from down under the Atlanta Braves single season appearance record holder Ooh. and a man who once had his nipples pierced, Peter Moylan. Both. Welcome Both to the, the same damn time. Yep. Went for it. All right. Let's dive into this. Now that okay. we only got 17 minutes to talk about <laughs> ball after Telly's three minute intro, let's, let's get right into it. So now we're digging weekly. Let's talk about some of the guys we had out in Arizona on digging yeah. deep. Yeah. First off, Bobby Wood Jr. just Come released on, last honest. Wednesday. Guys on an MVP tear right now, boys. Yes. Yeah. Just a what a ridiculous human, by the way. First of all, I just want to get that out of the way. I was impressed. Those everyone we sort of had come to the house impressed me. And I think that's the most important thing is that you get a perspective from these guys that you're not going to get anywhere else. You get to see their personalities, their real personalities that they're not going to unleash on regular members of the media. Unfortunately, having a conversation with two guys that played the game, three guys that played the game makes it a little bit easier for these guys. So it's a great perspective. Dude, absolutely. And and to see the start that he got off on, I mean, I think we all knew leaving that conversation after having Bobby Witt there for about an hour, hour and a half, whatever it was, we were all like, man, this is this kid's the real deal. Exactly. Damn, it'd be nice to have a sponsor uh, with a sports book right now because that futures bet after Bobby Witt Jr. saw us for MVP, that was a lock after that. Then my man starts out with a couple homers. Um, hot start. Speaking yeah. of hot starts in Kansas City, Salvi. Can we please, can we please give Salvi some flowers? I mean, why is this dude so underrated? Why does why does nobody talk about him being one of the best catchers there is? Why do you think? What is it about do you think do you think it's because what is it about his game that doesn't it's the same thing about you? We had this conversation a little bit ago. You metrically would 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 grade out as a terrible defender but me having right. played with you for two straight years and saw you pick everything that was thrown your way and make plays that shouldn't be made is it the same thing with salvi is it maybe his framing didn't grade out properly or maybe because he's so big i don't understand what it is that's what i'm trying to figure out like what is it if you ask any pitcher who they love throwing to if they've ever thrown to him salvi's the first one on there and i get it if you're not talking about him being the top catcher, there's a young guy, whatever, you can have that conversation. But to say that he's not a top 10 guy, at yeah. least, is is out of control. He so had 40 that's, pumps a couple of years ago. Yeah, he's breaking all kinds of records. Look up the resume. I mean, he's got eight all-stars, eight silver sluggers, gold gloves, all that type of stuff. I mean, at what point are we going to be like, all right, this guy's the real deal? Maybe is it because he was overshadowed by Yachty for as long as Yachty has been in the league? Everybody who thinks catching thinks Yachty. I mean, for sure. Yachty, uh, you know, you, when you went to St. Louis, you knew damn well Yachty was the catcher. If there was a ball two inches outside, Yachty was getting that call. If there was a ball that he thought was a strike and you're hitting and he asked the umpire, hey, where do you got that, Bobby? You knew damn well you need to swing the next time because he had that kind of respect. I always felt like when we were there, it was, you know, Yachty and Salvi, the, the state of Missouri, those were the catchers. Yeah. But 
I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. And I'll, I'll continue to fight this battle because I really don't understand how people don't say he's one of the best catchers in this game. Yeah. Do, you, do you think it's more of an analytical thing? Like they're trying to figure out it's it's a numbers game, whether he's throwing guys out and stuff. But is it overlooked the comfortability like that, Peter, you might have had with him right. as a catcher? Just the confidence you have when he's back there makes you a better pitcher, makes you win games or save games because you're throwing to a guy you know is going to be in the right place or call the right pitch, that completely changes your confidence in a sense. If you have a guy back there you completely trust in, but that's not a statistic we can value. Measure. You can't measure it, and I think that's what it is. The thing that we value as pitchers and as teammates for a catcher are the things that you literally can't measure. So game calling, holding runners, not just throwing them out, but you know, doing things to make them hold, talking to your pitcher, making sure he knows that he's got to mix up his times. It's the little intangible things that you can't measure that I think goes into the total value of a catcher that may not grade out if you're just looking straight numbers. That's what I think. I think we figured it out. No doubt. Yeah, it's, it's What a confusion, man. And especially now in a day and age where there's a lack of starting pitching, especially early on in the season. You know, first couple of weeks of the season, these guys are on probably 85 to 90 pitches. They're not stretched out yet. I mean, that's a big deal. And I know the game is trying to figure out a way to incentivize starting pitchers going longer. But at the end of the day, man, there's teams out there that are big into the bullpen games. And does that last? Does that last a full year? I mean, no. I can see you get to a playoff game, maybe you do that, but that doesn't last for 162. Right. And that's, that's I mean, that's a whole nother topic. We The amount of, I think pitching injuries is a big cause for what's going on with starters right now. I just went and looked at, there was an article came out this morning ranking the top rotations in the game. And, and, and you just look at the amount of guys that are injured on the list as well. There's half. There's guys that have got a full rotation sitting on the IL right now. Right now, so it's it's tough to really grade out pitching in general. But I think there's certainly going to be room for 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 starters. Julio Tehran just signed again with the Mets yesterday, so they they're looking for places for starters right now. Yeah, and there's and that's the thing. There's there's roles right to get through the season. You know that you got to have starting pitchers that are going to get you through that regular season, and then come postseason time. You know, maybe they're in the they're in the bullpen. They got some kind of role down there. But the point and the fact is, is like some of these teams that have the young starters or they have the starters that are now transitioning into that starter role, like this lefty in Chicago. That kid came out first couple of days and looked absolutely nasty. The reasoning of signing a Mike Clevenger out there for three million dollars and three million in incentives is because this dude is going to eat up one hundred fifty plus you know, innings for you. And then if this guy who can't be stretched out as a starter, if you somehow make the postseason, he's ready to go. So the depth, these teams understand, they need to know, obviously, that, okay, this is a young starter. This guy's coming off Tommy John. He's not going to be able to be a full season stretched out. So we need to map this out and time this out. And that's where a guy like Clev comes in who can give you quality innings. And then at that point in the playoffs, you can either have him spot start, go in the bullpen. He can do whatever you need him to do. It's such a non-romantic way of looking at the baseball season, but it's so freaking true. You give up a game in May and have a guy throw, get to 100 pitches, he may give up an eight spot, but you can do that to a Clevenger. Hey, man, we need you. A young kid, you could leave him out there for eight runs in three or four innings, and that could derail him for a couple of months trying to get his confidence back. Yeah, it's just it's stuffed certain teams like that's how you build a team to last throughout that full season. There's guys and there's no doubt in my mind. It's not saying they can't contribute in the postseason, but there's guys that you need to get you through that 162 game season. And, you know, it's it's crazy because watching the overall quality of the game right now, we talk about the good teams and the bad teams. There's such that there's such a big gap separation. And at the yeah. And at the end of the day, like Major League Baseball, there shouldn't be such a big gap like that. Let's go over out in Oakland right now because I'm, you know, I'm firing off on Twitter right now and I usually don't do this. But, you know, you see a young kid in Ruiz and I play with, with, with Poke, what we call him out there in San Diego. And man, this kid's a stud. He's 25 years old. He had 60 something stolen bases last year. And you're telling him that you're sending him down because he needs to get every every day at bats in the minor leagues and he needs to be an everyday player. You do that with a 20 year old stud. Yeah. that you don't want to start off in the major leagues like a Jackson Holiday, which should be in the major leagues, but you do that with a young 20-year-old that you plan on having there for the next 20 years, not a guy that you're going to try and shop at the trade deadline right. or you're trying to stop his clock or something like that. 
Look at the game they had this week. Uh, what was it? Wednesday against um, Wednesday against Boston. They they're down one nothing in the ninth inning. You got Kenley Jensen on the mound, one of the best closers. The only way to beat Kenley is to try and play small ball. You get drop a little run on him. You yeah, got to get, get on, on base. base. So you're telling me that if you have Poke on the bench, the leadoff guy gets on in the ninth inning, he pinch runs, yeah. steal second, third. Like you're telling me that guy is not good enough to be on that roster. Like when are we going to get back to the best players? are going to be on the team and there's no other bullshit that surrounds that i don't know when that's going to happen dude the problem is you're right the separation is so big but you know which teams are going to be shit before the season even starts mm -hmm. and that's the problem that i have at least when i first got up here maybe it was my lack of knowledge of the game and that at that point but you felt like april 1st there's 30 teams that have a chance to at least make the playoffs or you know give it a nudge now you look at the 30 teams and you're like, well, you know who's going to be in the playoffs based on basically just looking at the blueprint of the season starting off. Now there's a couple of surprise teams. Obviously you've got the Pirates that are starting off well, Detroit starting off well, Houston's horrible, the Marlins are horrible. So I get it. It's week one of the season, but to just watch the slate of games on a, on a daily basis, it's like, man, it, it's tough. I don't, I don't know what Oakland's going to do if they have to play the Braves this year. Like it's going to be a bloodbath. An absolute bloodbath. It's going to be disgusting. And but at the same time, Oakland could come out and smash the Braves 5 nothing, and then you turn around and go, see, Oakland can beat anyone. This lack of spending's working. It's like, ugh, come on, all right. Yeah, and and it kills me, man. You got guys like Tommy Pham sitting at home right now. Still. And yeah, sitting at home. The guy was traded to the Diamondbacks last year in the deadline, hitting three-hole for a team that went to the World Series. So, like, that's why the gaps are this big because you got guys like that sitting at home because you would rather, you know, call up a young guy and it's nothing against these young guys. But at the same time, some of these young guys aren't ready to go, man. They need that time in the minor leagues to get ready to go. That doesn't happen and I anymore. I think that's where we get the sloppy play. That doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't, man. It, it, it's insane because, you know, back in the day, and I hate to be that guy back Don't in the be day. That. No, no. Okay. We have to have a, we got to have a back in the day button or something on this. We cannot say that. Maybe I can drop like one or two per no, per show. No, God. we are a back in the day less. I wrote it down. <laughs> I even have it written down on my notes back in the day. And then I scratched it out. No, we are not saying that on this. Ah, show. I need, I need one or two, bro. I need one or two. History shows us go. <sighs> God, I mean, Okay, so you needed to know how to play the game, right? Yeah. You needed to know what, where to be in what situation. You needed to know how to run the bases. You needed to know all that type of stuff. And I, back up I just bases think for now, my benefit. I need to know how to back up bases, and I did. Exactly, because that's how these <laughs> Little League home runs you're seeing on Instagram and Twitter, that's how they happen when people aren't in the spots that they need to be. Yeah. But Fundamental. Right, enough of that back in the day talk. I dropped my one for the for the episode, good. and we're good to go now. Get out of let's here. Let's give some flowers out, huh? Because we Please. just went on a little negative rant right there, so Please. let's do that. My man, Jerickson Profar, young pro. Ooh, we had him and Tati on in Arizona, and I think each and every one of you guys in that Arizona house understood everything I was explaining about this dude Profar and how much of a teammate, how much of a leader he is. Ten years of service for our boy Pro, so let's give it up for our boy Pro. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. That's, that's a massive a huge deal. deal. Yeah, that's, I tell a, you huge, what, when that's I was, a huge honor too, especially he was a massive prospect with Texas when he first came massive. up. And I remember seeing him being that guy that was just up and down and up and down and could never get solid at bats, never get a chance to prove that he belonged in the big leagues to get 10 years from all that. That is show and having met him, what a person. I keep saying this about everybody, but you said that he's the guy that's the bridge guy. He's Martin Prado again. He's the guy that I would, would go to back in – Ooh, I almost said it. I he almost did said it. it. He done did it. When he I was a teammate it. with Martin. Uh, but, yeah, he we, we need those guys. He's the guy that, that just keeps everybody light. And, and uh, yeah, congrats. Congrats, Prof. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a huge deal, man, to get 10 years of service in the big leagues. Not only to get to the big leagues 10 years, you got to go through some serious adversity, which Profar had a couple injuries he had to come back from. So to do that is not easy, what I'm trying to say. So that's a big deal. And I think we should all, you know, applaud that, which we did, because that's huge. You know, yeah. I remember back in my day when I reached 10 years of service, I was in L.A. And we were playing the Dodgers. And sure enough, man, Justin Turner sent me over an expensive bottle of liquor and said, man, hey, congratulations on 10 years. This is a huge deal. And at that point in time, you're just kind of cruising along. You don't realize it. 
But that's a huge feat, man. Another one, too, my boy out there in Arizona, Cattell Marte, 1,000 hits. It's crazy. That's a big deal right there. Cattell, yeah, let's well do done. it, baby. 1,000 well hits. Done. He's still I mean, got I'm telling you right now, I've been one of the biggest Cattell Marte fans out there after being in the NL West for a couple years. This dude, when healthy, and I know that's a huge when, when healthy, if healthy, that's a big statement. Yeah. But this dude now, when he's healthy and he proves to be healthy, is a top 10 hitter in our game. I don't, you can't tell me otherwise. Wow. Both sides of the plate, he's that dude. Really? Yes. I think the world got to see it last year in the playoffs. You got to see him go off. He, this dude is special, man. He started on fire, right? I remember he came up all guns blazing and he was going to be all star for a long, long time. What's he been dealing with the last few years? Injuries? Yeah, there, there was a couple position changes early. They wanted him in the outfield, they wanted him to second. Then he had a hammy one year. People forget also, man, a lot of talk of, a lot of talk in football about these guys playing on turf. Arizona out yeah. there is a turf field, and yeah. that crushes your body, man. I remember we would go Arizona for four games, Colorado for three games, and between the turf and the altitude, I mean, that is tough on your body. So for they're sure. finding ways to try and keep him healthy. And I think kind of like the low cane program back in the day, yeah, he's a guy that you need to build in off days for. He needs that recovery time. And there's nothing wrong with it, mm. but as a manager, you got to know that. And Tori Lavello out there knows that more than anybody. As good as anyone. And he's got that club firing on all cylinders, and he yeah. always will. Yeah. Speaking of firing on all cylinders, the Mets are looking great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to get in there. Sorry, sorry. I, I love had to, to just hear get that. that in there. Marlins, love- 0 7, Mets 0 4. Not the way I saw that starting. Obviously, the weather's had a little bit to do with a few of those starts, but, but the Mets just having trouble having trouble this year. And Skip's going to get that club in, in Florida turned around for sure. Skip will. There's no doubt in my mind he will. Skip, I mean, they're starting pitching, man. They had so many injuries in spring training and like injuries a week or two away leading right. up to the season. And, yeah. you know, what can you do at that point? Because you got a bunch of young guys that, you know, are your prize prospects and they're not ready to go yet. Yeah. And then you have your guys that are supposed to break in the rotation and they go down. So that's a big gap they got to fill. Then you got to cover the bullpen arms. Then you got to keep bringing guys in to replace the guys that have blown it. Let's just, it's just nonstop. Once it starts, it's tough to turn it around. Skip will figure it out. We all know Skip here. We've all had plenty of time with Skip. He will. But to the New York point that you made, what a difference in starts. So you got the Yankees starting out guns blazing, go to two big time series on the road on the West Coast, right. come out, you know, six and two, six and one, whatever it was. And they're coming home for their home debut. Soto's balling out. That place is going to be rocked. They're getting Yankee haircuts Stadium. at 3 a.m.? You see that? <laughs> 3 hey, shout out to Jordan, haircuts, baby. Shout out day. to Jordan MVP, the barber, baby. <laughs> and then yeah, you got, man. and then on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, you got the Mets. Man. The Mets started out, haven't won a game. They got a rookie manager over there. They had the little slide incident where they kind of handled that poorly as a team, and Milwaukee kind of ran all over them. So, man, this is – you talk about being in a big market and stuff you have to deal with. That is the that is the perfect comparison right there and just the starts of the Yankees and the Mets. I have no doubt that, obviously, the Mets are going to turn something around. Uh, I, I didn't expect the Yankees to be doing what they're doing, but it's exciting for the Yankees. They haven't been good for a long time, I guess. It's been a few years, but – there's some frustrations building in New York, obviously, with the uh, with the other side over in Flushing. Yeah, they got to get Senga. They got to get Senga healthy. You know, Lindor and Alonzo over there leading the pack. They're, those guys are going to be ready to roll. They'll show up ready to play every day. So they will turn it around. But but that's the pressure, man. That is the right. pressure of playing out there. If you're playing, you know, in, in another market, a small market, and you start off like that, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal, but it's a big deal locally. Right. And I mean, every time you turn on the TV, every time you go on Twitter, um, someone's talking about the Mets, someone's talking about the Yankees. So that's just a different animal out there. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. And this yeah. weather this weather has been shit out here, so maybe the Mets have a little bit of an excuse, but they'll turn it around, that's for sure, at some point. But, dude, I love, to, I love listening to you guys talk about this. I mean, you, I just sat here quiet just as a fan. I know I'm supposed to be on the show here right now, but... That was awesome, guys. Let's just touch on a little bit about the podcast. You know, we just had Bobby Witt on. We gave so many guys uh, their flowers, like you said, about for what they're doing on the field, but also as people coming on the show. We have Salvi coming up. We have Tatis and Profar next week, I believe. So there's a lot to stay. I'm sorry, that's two weeks from now. A lot to stay tuned for. Bryce Butler coming up. So we, we push a little bit away from baseball and go with former NFL star. Master's week, man. And now, yeah, and golfer. Coming up on Masters weekend, 
I mean, mm. if we had that betting partnership, I would, I'd be tough to not pick Scotty Scheffler, man. Like he is just a stud right now. It's so hard to see anybody else winning. It doesn't matter where he is in the field. He seems to want to come back and win something. So I'm going to be rooting for him. That's for sure. But lots going on in the game of golf too, but Scotty, Scotty's like plus, I think it was like plus 300, 260, something like that to win the whole tournament. And that's considered an underdog, but to start the Masters and be only plus 260, plus 300, whatever it is, is crazy because there's no one, there's really no one that ever is favored like that. No, I feel like you're never more or less than whatever which way you say than plus 1000. Like it's such a, it's such a hard line to get to be like almost like you had to be a tiger of Eskin. Like he's pushing his way towards that with, with the way he's playing right now. And he, it's crazy because like his numbers are so good and what he's putting on this show he's putting on right now is Tiger esque, but it's still Tiger was like it's not even close. Still light years above it. Isn't that crazy? It's like it's we're crazy. watching something that seems so unbelievable. But when that happened back then, it was definitely once. Well, in a he life turned time. around the popularity of golf. He single handedly turned around the popularity of golf for yeah, a ten year yeah. period. It was just unbelievable. Don't sleep on the Aussies at the Masters, by the way. <laughs> Adam Scott, Jason Day, don't be afraid. They always love it out there at Augusta. And hey, I, shout out to the Aussies. The Aussies are, are that's one of our biggest fan bases out there. Thanks to this guy, Peter Moylan, baby. Oh, yeah. Pedro. Me. <laughs> Love <you guys. laughs> but it was cool to talk to Bryce, man, because obviously a lot of guys in the big leagues, especially pitchers, they all love to golf. And oh, yeah. every single trip we go on, they got golf mapped out. I remember one year Jason Vargas was recovering from Tommy John. And I mean, this dude. This dude was on the MLB tour golfing at all the prestige spots, all the best country clubs there was. And Augusta is one that that seems to be the toughest to get on, obviously. So to hear Bryce talk about just how immaculate the course was, how you get in a tuxedo after and go to the dinner at night, you're drinking the fine wine. I mean, that was pretty cool. And I think that is something that's a bucket list experience, not only to play on that course as well, but I mean, to go there for Masters Week has just got to be that's got to be buzzing. His whole life after football has just exploded. It's amazing to see too, man, because he definitely, he was on the Cowboys. He played his years in football, but after he was like, man, this is something that I really enjoy and I want to pursue. And I mean, he's rocking all the new Puma gear every time you see him on Instagram. He's golfing at all the coolest places out there. So it was so fun to talk to him and just to kind of hear his love for golf as well. Yeah. He's not scared to get on the gram and, and put out his fit, dude. He, he, he was out front of the, he was out, he was out front walking back and forth, filming himself to like coming into the podcast, showing off his shoes and shit. So Bryce the man, I love that guy. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, check out the Digging Deep podcast. Please subscribe, like all that stuff, do the thing. We're on Instagram and all the good places. So appreciate you guys. Until next week, digging weekly out. Peace.